Welcome back to Stasis. Taya is in danger and we need to rush to her side. So of course before we do that we're going to stop and read PDA entries for about 10 minutes. Uh, okay, never mind, uh, make that 20 minutes. Oh my god, that's a lot of entries. Jared Winslow. I don't think I've heard that name before. I try real hard not to think any less of Scotty, but I swear the boy ain't got a caring bone in his body. And plus, I bet he don't know what any of those big words he uses mean. He's always hinting that when we're back home, we can be partners in business. I got myself a job on a damn spaceship. Does he reckon I'd need any help getting a job? That boy ain't right. Back before the rapid transport system was running through the Groom Lake, folks used to get around in these really slow transport pods. I found one, tucked behind a pile of storage crates. I've been working on it for maybe a month now. I reckon I can get it working. Ooh. Going back to old transportation technology. It sounds like what I'm going to have to do. Scotty played an April Fool's joke on me. Dumped some water on me while I was working on the pod. I accidentally cut him real bad with a wrench. Anyways, I'm going to play a little joke on him and set his favorite book on fire. But not today. Sometime when he won't expect it. Pod's coming along great. A couple more months and maybe I can test it out. My kid brother, Judd, would be so proud. He used to help me work on cars all the time. One time, we was fixing the brakes on this old clunker when one of the jacks broke. I know he's in a better place now, but I still feel... bad. I pray about it every day, and I know that God knows that I didn't mean to do it. I promised him that I'm trying not to be so angry anymore. Yeah, I've I've been under cars before, helping my father do some car work, and you know, when a car's jacked up and you're underneath it, it's really scary. It's terrifying. I'm constantly on edge. I'm just like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, if this falls down on me, I'm freaking dead, or at least like all my ribs are broken. <laughs> Ugh. It's pretty terrifying. All finished. Had to get some parts printed with the nanite machine, but I'm sure Stefan didn't mind much. Can't wait to try it out. Scotty says the pod won't work, and that'll get into trouble for it. Who the hell does he think he is? I made sure it would work. I ain't stupid. It's getting real hard to breathe and just pray about stuff. People like Scotty. God lets them live for some reason or other. Albert noticed some strange mushroom stuff growing all over engineering today. Guess we're gonna have to get cleaning. Good news and bad news. We had to scrub like mama on laundry day, so the gunk is just about gone. Bad news is, it's all over the damn place. Scotty has been really nice since I burned that book of his. Scotty's nicer every day. The Bible said he'd change if I was nice to him. And look what happened. A little bit of bread goes a long way in the house of God. Damn, this ain't good. The ship's on level 7 lockdown. Looks like we're gonna get real familiar with one another down here. Folks must have gotten mighty hungry. Screams are echoing everywhere. Scotty and me are gonna lock down engineering, shut down the baskets, and close the umbilical bridge. Keep them away from the twins. It's Judd all over. I swear I didn't mean to. I couldn't get Scotty to shut it and stop making a ruckus. I just wanted to shut him up. I swear I didn't push too hard, but for God's sakes, he was being so damn loud. It just gets to where a guy can't take it no more. He thought he was better than me all along. Well, he's dead now. He's staring at me. Got to tuck him away somewhere. I hear him. He's been laughing, crying, cracking jokes, 
He won't stop. Can't get him to stop. Folks say I can fix just about anything with a screwdriver. I already fixed Scotty. I already fixed Judd. God wants us to fix folks up when they're broken. Can I fix me? I don't think so, Jared. Alright, what have we got here? Pod terminal. Test database. What the heck is this? Test message, test message. Attempt to fix the pod terminal. I think it got it working. Sort. Backspace don't work. Still can't do much, but make entries. On. Open. How do I get access to the other functions? Fuck you, you ain't a goddamn radio, is invalid, or recipient is currently offline. Terminal now recognizes the pod. Pod door hydraulics can be accessed, but not opened. Pod is ready to roll. Terminal works well enough, but cannot erase test posts. Hmm, oh, well that's good for me. I'm kind of intimidated by this thing. Oh, well, nothing to do about it. Oh god, I just went behind that. What the heck? John, it's maybe best not to phase in, into the refrigerator. Let's go. I actually get to pick where I want to go. I'm at the janitorial office. <laughs> Look at how old this thing is. I love this. Look at all the detail that's been put into this ancient little control panel. All these wires and doodads. It's so cool. Disposal area, visitor center expansion. Uh, I guess let's just go to the next place. My god. A hive. There's no ship left here. Everything, everything is covered. Final boarding call for Chelsea Bain and Parasite Sushi. Please proceed to get night immediately. The lustrous surface is punctured by an occasional ripple. Smoking is prohibited for the duration of the event. Tiny ridges of tissue vibrate along the edge of the crusted organic matter. These creatures are following their base instincts. Breeding. Eating. Ernest Gunn. Chemist. Well. I guess he wasn't part of the solution. Because he hasn't dissolved yet. <clears throat> Matei Eugene Vassil. What an interesting name. Matei Eugene. You know, I've got the feeling that all these corpses are maybe named after Kickstarter backers. I bet that's like a Kickstarter tier thing, you know? To get your name on a corpse? <laughs> Who can aspire to anything greater in life than having your name on a corpse? Creeping phlegm. The function of this viscous mucus is unknown. This is so disgusting. The tower. 
maintenance and repair and solid waste disposal facility is overdue by 9,125 days. A heavy loader. Looks like it was sealed in during construction. I repeat. I don't know if it's ever gonna move again. I guess I can try. I guess I have to try. God, look at all these hybrids. <laughs> I've never seen anything as disgusting as this place. Holy shit, that's a face. That's a face. I just realized that is a whole fucking face. An effigy has been sculpted from a slab of mucus. Its role is unknown. Effigy? Are you sure it's not forming into a giant person? All I want to do is see you turn into a giant woman. A giant woman. <laughs> this is the most inappropriate place for a Steven Universe song. Ugh, don't step on the hybrids. Actually, I think all I can do is step on the hybrids. I think everything's a hybrid. Just walk over them. Uh. <sighs> Plasma. Plasma cutter. The versatile slicing tool has been fixed to the side of the loader. Oh, that's going to come in handy. John, I'm pretty sure that weighs like 200 pounds. You are a very strong man. Loader distribution box. Ugh. Ah, I guess I just took some of the power. Anything more? Nah, it looks like that's it. Do I have to load that into the plasma cutter? I don't think this will fit. No. I don't think that'll work. The loader has been engulfed in gelatinous mucus. Hard bony growth. Knobs of bone protrude from the surface. Can I, like, plasma cut their effigy? I can try to make it fit, but it may break. Hmm. Well, I'm guessing I need this plasma cutter, probably for the next stop. Oh my god, you know what? I hope I get to use the plasma cutter on Milan. Oh, that would be beautiful. Dissect him. Yes. No, to be honest, I'm hoping Milan has a more poetic end. I'm thinking of a hybrid tearing him limb from limb. Perhaps a hybrid birthed by, uh, by John's wife. The temporary platform has been left to rot in this sealed maintenance bay. It looks like you can use it. Gotta find another way out. Hmm. Maybe I can cut that with the plasma cutter. Let's take a look around first, though. Heavy-duty loader covered in a thin layer of sparkling dust sits idle. Hmm. Maybe I can give it some power and then just break through the scaffolding. Thick plastic sheets dangle forgotten among the unfinished construction project. Yeah, they never finished expanding. Alright, let's take a look. Oh, retinal scanner. Uh. Well, that's not gonna work for me, is it? I ain't got no eye. <laughs> Can I do anything here? Can I even try to scan my own eye? Doesn't look like it. Hmm. 
I feel like I should at least be able to try. Weird. All right, well, let's just try cutting this scaffolding. I don't think that'll work. Okay. Fine. So I need someone's eye. I don't think this will fit. Where would I find someone's eye who would actually work with that? I think I maybe need to open the refrigerator at the janitorial office. Right, because I should have a preserved body. The body of, uh, the body of Scotty, right? Oh god, yeah, that's it. Gonna have to get Scotty's body. John, I really don't trust you with a laser. Did you see how bad his aim was? <laughs> he just like shot the... He shot more than just what he needed to. <sighs> Thank god he didn't like hit the maintenance bot or anything like that. Uh, oh, what the fuck, John? <laughs> John, is that the only way you can think of to get someone's eye, is to smash their entire fucking head? Does John just not give a shit anymore now that his daughter's died? Jesus. Ah, Scott Tanaka. Jared would make for a useful business partner, but I can't even suggest it without him erupting into a fit of rage and beginning to rant that that ain't how it's done in my family. Does the man honestly expect to get anywhere without once taking help from those more intelligent than he is? The Groom Lake has been a pleasure to be aboard thus far, much more entertaining than being on Earth. Even my family's private island isn't this entertaining. Granted, there isn't much left to do now that all the indigenous animals have been hunted and killed. Space, however, is infinite. My family's private island. Alright, so Scotty has a rich family. I feel as though planning an April Fool's joke almost two weeks in advance is a little pathetic. Especially when the plan consists of a single prank. Pouring water on Jared. I poured water on him. Just a little glass. And the consequence? The hulking dimwit chased me down the corridor with a wrench, slicing a reasonable portion of my forehead open. I'm now thoroughly convinced that he is deranged, and will be doing some investigation. After agreeing to transfer a sum of money, I convinced, I convinced Dr. Graham to obtain Jared's medical records for me. Jared really is mentally ill. He suffers from outbursts of rage. According to one report, he murdered his brother by crushing him to death with a car. It goes, on, it goes on to note that Jared believes it to be the will of the Lord. Capitalized. Just like that. How in the hell did he manage to get a position in the most important area of the ship? I'll have to stay on his good side. I'm beginning to miss my father's mansion more with each passing day. Having maids and chefs to cater to me is how I was raised to be responsible for cleaning up after myself and walking all the way to the mess hall for food remains a challenge. Aw, oh, poor Scotty. Sometimes I question my own sanity. I briefly criticized Jared's hobby of repairing that old transport pod. And oh, the daggered stare he gave me in return. What did I think I could possibly accomplish by talking to him about it? Unbelievable. He burned my... Oh, I forgot how to pronounce that. Is it thesaurus or thosaurus? I think it's thesaurus. Which always just sounds like a dinosaur. He burned my th thesaurus. Jared marches towards me. 
ripped it from my hands, or marched towards me, ripped it from my hands and set it on fire. Then he screamed, April Fools, and sprinted away, waving the burning pages above his head. <laughs> I'm just picturing that happening. <laughs> Can you imagine somebody doing that? Ripping a book from your hands, setting it on fire, and then screaming April Fools and running away? <sighs> I can't begin to say how many times I've retyped my entries. They feel... not as good? There's a better word, I swear it. I would kill to get my thesaurus back. How can anyone respect me if I don't sound smart? <laughs> I give up. I ran into Dr. Graham today, and he remarked that I sounded like less of a pretentious asshole. Guess I should just talk to him like an ordinary person from now on. Oh hey, ordinary is a pretty big word. He was literally using the thesaurus just to sound smart. Oh my god. My arms hurt. It was hard work to get all that fungus out of the generators. We did it, though. Cleaning is not easy. I feel a sense of accomplishment. I guess Jared isn't all bad. He apologized to me today for losing his temper so often. And you know what? I apologized in return. I don't remember the last time I did that. Oh my god! Is Scotty actually becoming less of an asshole? Holy shit! It turns out the guy had a bunch of rations tucked away. He's shared them with me, even though he's almost out. If I don't starve to death here, I may have to put him in charge of Tanaka Investments Charity, which doesn't exist. Yet. Rations are here. We have just enough food in the freezer to last us. We're far less hungry than the guys manning the twins. I have to say, I'm impressed. I'm not sure how those guys have had the energy to keep us afloat with so little to eat. Those guys are titans. Engineering is now on total lockdown. We have to keep whatever those things are away from the generators. I don't think that we'll ever see the light of day again. At least when I die. It'll be with the only real friend I ever had. Aww. Scotty was changing. He started out as a prick. And then he became less of a prick. And then he thought of the other guy as his friend. And then the other guy murdered him and put him in a freezer. That's really sad. And look what you did to his head, John. Look at what you did to his head, you fucking savage. Okay, let's see if we can fire this thing up. Oh, right, I can't use the item here. I guess I have to use it outside. <laughs> Just like the uh, the views on that uh, control panel for the tram a long time ago. I don't get it. I don't get it. If using the eyeball outside of the view of the panel itself triggers a cutscene where you watch the panel open up anyway, why not just make it so you can use the eyeball in the panel? Why, why, why do you have to leave the screen? I really don't get it. Looks like you need some power. Oh, <laughs> can't, right, can't add the power in the screen either. Let's do it out here. Break the scaffolding. Now 
Now look what you did, John. Look what you did to this 120th scale ship model. Welcome to the Groom Lake Visitor Center. Kane Corporation trusts that you'll enjoy your stay. Please ensure your personal data tag is updated with your medical history and is functioning correctly. Personal data tag? Oh. Is it finally going to come in handy? Been lugging this thing around for what feels like forever. Looks like I gotta go all the way around the ship to get back here. Exposed plastic protrudes from the partially destroyed scale model of the Groom Lake. Launched in 2100, the tower is 6106 feet long. This massive nuclear fusion power ship was used extensively as a planetary mining platform. Fifteen years of atmospheric exposure resulted in a weakened Harlan Hoti commission. In 2116, K Corporation recruited a vessel from its mining fleet to be repurposed as a laboratory. Okay, so it used to be a mining ship, and then it was repurposed for research. Gotcha. The aft section of the model has suffered less damage, but still reveals hairline cracks throughout. And, like the real Groom Lake, it will soon collapse under its own weight. Kane Mining Limited was founded in 2050. Henry Kane was appointed to exercise control over East Asian Pacific debt repayment through mining asset acquisition. This poster depicts a 95-year-old Henry Kane in the prime of his life. In the prime of his life at 95? Did you know, Kane Mining Limited was rebranded as Kane Corporation in June 2019. Henry Kane was born to an impoverished family in January the 26th, 2000. His mother Clara was a store clerk and his father Edmund was a veterinarian. Wait. Did that say impoverished? Like, he was poor? How can you be poor if both your parents are working and one's uh, a store clerk and the other's a veterinarian? I mean, okay, store clerk isn't, like, the highest paid job, but veterinarian's pretty decent. And if both your parents are working... Uh, hmm. I mean, you certainly wouldn't, been ro wouldn't be rolling in money, but I, I doubt you could be poor. Welcome to the Groom Lake. The tower has rechristened the Groom Lake in 2120, when she left dry dock and began her journey towards the outer planet. Charles Clark Kane has proudly taken over the reins from his father and continues his family's legacy. A replica of a statue of remembrance that stands in Washington, D.C. In 2077, a mile below the surface, Camp 571 in Japan produced a treasure trove of medical research documentation. Did you know, Henry Kane served in the military and was a decorated naval aviator. In 2077, uh, John? John, why are you walking on the pillar? John, didn't we talk about this? <laughs> uh, I can't seem to go back, though. I'm, I'm clicking on the ground, and he won't move to the ground. He'll walk on the pillar, but he won't walk on the ground. John? John? Oh, fuck me. I seem to have moved to, like, a, like a different level of w walkable surfaces. Like, somehow I'm now walkable on everything that normally isn't walkable, and I can't walk on stuff that's normally walkable. Fuck! Fuck! This was my last safe game. Please tell me I have the eyeball. 
I don't even have the eyeball. <sighs> this game has serious technical problems. This is twice now the game's fucked me over with a bug that takes me to the last save game, which was like five to ten minutes ago. Oh. I'll be right back. Okay, let's go ahead and save the game now. God knows the game doesn't have its own autosaves, like, pretty much ever. Let's not walk... I, actually, how did I even do that? How did I end up walking on the pillar? I think I was here. I think I was right here at this, and then I double-clicked on that, and then somehow we ended up there. advancement of medical research and its auxiliary studies culminated in the perfection of genetic manipulation. Popularized by the media as a medical cold war, the eugenics age far exceeded selective breeding. In 2049, a worldwide ban was placed on unapproved genetic modification. Yeah, I mean, that stuff is coming, honestly. We're getting better and better at modifying the genes of stuff. And we're going to have to deal with these problems. We're, we're going to have problems of how much can we modify genes, under what conditions, how much approval do you need, you know, designer genes and stuff like that. It's going to be an issue. I mean, it already is an issue, but it's going to be even more of an issue. Uh, what are these? Are these escape pods? This partially destroyed craft is now useless. Yeah, lifeboats. Destroyed. Destroyed. Hmm. Oh, this music's getting really epic. Destroyed. 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 Whoa. <laughs> that lighting is so cool. I feel like something big is gonna happen as soon as I... Yep, something's happening. Something's happening. Alone in the world, trembles with the cold. Why, why did you say that out loud, John? Oh, here we go. Mr. Maratic. John, shoot him! Kill him now! <gasps> I may have pulled the trigger, so to speak, but you and Miss Hensley loaded the gun! Don't try to worm your way out of this, you goddamn monster. Monster? By whose standards do you call me a monster? The morals of men don't apply to gods! Okay, can I save the game? No, okay. In this case, we're just gonna do this. And we're dead. Okay, cool. So I get to do that all again, and I can't save the game, so we're gonna have to listen to him talk every single time. Awesome! Alright, I'm just thinking, what am I gonna shoot? If I don't shoot him, what do I shoot? Don't try to worm your way out of this, you goddamn monster. Monster? By whose standards do you call me a monster? The morals of men don't apply to gods! Just to reestablish, I can't save, right? No, escape does nothing. Uh, machine parts... 
gun turrets. I can shoot this portal, but then we're all dead, right? Including Ellen Marichek. He's about to shoot me, isn't he? Yep. Okay, this is gonna be fun, no save point. Let's go through the final dialogue ten times, because as we know, the more you play the final cutscene, if you want to call it that, the final uh, dramatic climax, the more dramatic it is. Movies have been known to repeat the final scene ten times for more drama. And no, I can't skip the dialogue. You really are a roach, Mr. Maracek. John, shoot him! Kill him now! Alright, so I've got like ten seconds to make my decision on what I want to shoot. I may have pulled the trigger, so to speak. But you and Miss Hensley loaded the gun! Try to worm your way out of this, you goddamn monster. Monster? By whose standards do you call me a monster? I could shoot the, the portal. Morals of men it will kill him, and it will kill Taya, gods. and it will probably kill me. Maybe Ellen, too. Gun turrets. Let's try the portal. Nope. <laughs> he died, but shot anyway. <laughs> I don't know how that works. Okay, we're gonna go through this as many times as it takes until I find the right hotspot. Stasis, you make me sad. You make me so sad. So much potential. You really are a roach, Mr. Maracek. John, shoot him! Kill him now! I may have pulled the trigger, so to speak, but you and Miss Hensley loaded the gun! Don't try to worm your way out of this, you goddamn monster. Monster? By whose standards do you call me a monster? The morals of, of men don't, don't apply, apply to, to gods! Pay a ship? No. Machine parts? Oh, uh, okay. Holy shit, John. Quantum storage device damaged and door missing. Fractural femur detected. Scapula damaged. Seek immediate medical attention. That really doesn't look good, holy shit. Alan, did you... Have we got her? I do. She's here. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. I'm sorry, it wasn't supposed to end like this. Waking you was a mistake, John. But I'm happy to have met you. I don't understand. Tia, what do you mean? You woke me. Answer me! We needed a way to transport the research off the Groom Lake. And your white bone marrow was a perfect storage device. Search? This is about fucking research? Yes! It's about research. Worth billions, John. Billions. So you cost all of this. You let those things loose. <laughs> no, I'm not that sloppy. The idiots we sent to get your wife's body turned off all the containment protocols. We lost Ellen in all the chaos. That pussy Yuri was on his way to you when Milan got involved. Oh, on his way to get my DNA. It was the only way to locate the data carrier in the ship vest. 
old man Kane will be rolling in his grave when I sell his secrets. You're just like the man. Is that what you think? John, do you love your wife? Well, I loved my husband and Kane's security forces murdered him during a protest. Kane Corporation took everything from me and now I will burn them to the ground. You don't have to do this. You don't. To stasis pods, hun. It was never gonna happen. No technology self-structure preservation engaged. Selenographic coordinates confirmed. Autopilot has been engaged. Time to departure. 15 minutes. Okay, please tell me I can say Oh my god, I still can't save. Oh god, he's gonna fucking you crawl to it. Any intention oh. of helping me? You use my oh. You use my family. Not personal. You bitch. Guilty. I've got my data tag. What good is that? these gun turrets would shoot her, that would be nice. Am I supposed to do something with my data tag? Is this gonna make them shoot her? Fuck. Why didn't they shoot me if I had the data tag on me the whole time? This vessel has been clear for departure. I guess because I took it out of quantum storage? I guess if it's in quantum storage, it, they can't detect it? Yeah, yeah, I guess that's how it works. Oh, fuck, I can walk now? Uh, okay. <laughs> it didn't look like he could walk before. Alright, I can save now, thank god. Oh. How is he able to walk? Wasn't his bone, like, entirely sticking out of his leg? Hmm. Just I can touch the body, but I can't seem to. Destination changed. I love you, Ellen. Wait, so was that not actually Ellen? Or was that her and she's just dead? <laughs> Either way. Jesus. And, uh, why, why didn't he get on board? There's another stasis pod for someone else. I guess he wouldn't maybe survive stasis, given how wounded he was? Oh my god, is that the entire credits list? This really was made by just a couple people for the most part. Wow. 
Wow. Yeah, I believe it was mainly made by just the two, uh, two brothers. I believe did the bulk of the work on the game. So it really was a passion project that was under, um, that had been worked on for a very, very long time. I don't remember exactly how many years, but I think it's at least four. I think even longer, possibly. It's definitely a passion project. <sighs> well, all right, let's do a quick wrap up. I might do a review on this game, I'm not quite sure, but just to kind of quickly summarize my thoughts. I, l I really like the kind of game it is. A uh, point-and-click sci-fi horror adventure game is so up my alley, it's not even funny. It's like the exact sort of game I love. Um, and I, I backed this game on Kickstarter. A long time ago I backed it, because I was so excited for it. And I have to say I'm disappointed. It's not bad. It's certainly not bad. It's really, really strong in a couple ways, and pretty freaking weak in a couple of other ways. And the end result is a mixture of the two, of really good stuff and really mediocre stuff, or just bad stuff. And the end result just... Eh. It was up and down, but overall... It was just okay, and it was really frustrating sometimes. So, let's talk about some of the really strong stuff. Okay, so, it does atmosphere great. The atmosphere is really good. And this is because of uh, a bunch of different things. It's because of the audio design. The audio design's really good. All sorts of creepy noises and random screams just interspersed in the background, and things just clunking and machinery and wind and... Well, not wind, because it's on a ship, but you know. Like, just kind of... Like, uh, eerie atmospheric sounds. They did a great job with that. Yeah, the audio design was really great. The voice acting was, um, it was pretty good. It was kind of a bit up and down. I think Dr. Milan was probably the weakest. Taya was pretty good, and I think the strongest was John. John was really, really good. Yeah, I thought he was really great. And also the visuals, too. And the visuals are, unfortunately, a bit blurry. Because I believe all the assets were made in 720p. And I'm playing in 1080p, and I believe everything is just upscaled 1080p. So everything's a bit blurry, unfortunately. I think that's kind of a budget limitation, from what I've heard from the creator. Um, but aside from that, it's really good. Like, there's an incredible amount of detail in the environment. A little bit of blurriness aside, the, the environment is wonderfully detailed. It's really beautiful. Beautiful in how well it captures destruction and blood and gore and, oh god, it's just really gross and disgusting in, like, the best way possible. So between everything looking gory and grimy and dark and just like an old junker of a ship, with all this horrific medical research going on, between that and the sound design, it had a wonderful atmosphere. Really creepy. So they nailed that really well. And also the story, too. It's, uh, I mean, it's not the greatest story. It's, it's definitely not the greatest story. It's pretty cheesy, especially towards the end. Where the whole, like, you know, Dr. Milan believes himself to literally be a god. I, I don't know, that's just... that's over the top. It's really cheesy. But uh, for the most part, like, all the all the more Loki stuff, right? Not, not the doctor who believes himself to be a god, but the more Loki stuff of just this really unethical research going on and all these different departments, you know, finding, like, strange samples and hearing strange noises and hearing... realizing they're... There's children being tested on, and just like all these different departments kind of finding out little bits of the story. And all the kind of storylines that flew, uh, that flowed from that was really well detailed. Like, I, I think the logs are really well written. They're really interesting. Like, I always liked reading them. And they always told me more about the world. So uh, a really nice amount of work has been put into the, uh, the story and all the people and making it all work together. You know, all of it was relevant to understanding the whole of the story. It didn't feel like I was reading stuff that was just like, what's the point of reading this, who cares? Right? It all felt meaningful. And the text descriptions, when you mouse over any, you know, anything in the environment, the descriptions were wonderful. They were all so well written and, and so detailed, too. Like, even if you mouse over a bunch of different, like a bunch of hospital beds, like each hospital bed will have its own unique description. It's, uh... It's really amazing, actually, how much work has been put into the descriptions of the stuff in the environment. It's really wonderful. So that's what I think is the major good stuff. Now, let's talk about the bad stuff. 
I guess I've already mentioned the cheesiness of the story, especially the whole Dr. Milan believes himself to be a god thing. There's that. Um, another thing is the bugginess. As you saw multiple times, pressing escape caused my game to instantly load that one time, which erased 10 minutes of progress because the game really doesn't like autosaves for some reason. Um, and then somehow he's able to walk on the wall, which kept me then stuck in the wall so I couldn't leave. And once again, the game didn't like autosaves, so I lost like five minutes of progress. <laughs> Pretty freaking buggy. And, uh, I mean, the last one was frustrating, but the first one, where I pressed escape and it reset me back like ten minutes, that was especially frustrating and especially horrible for the game's, the, ga the flow of the game and the pacing of the game, because that happened right before John's daughter died. It completely ruined the pacing of that and just ruined the mood and I... It just ruined that scene. Absolutely ruined it. It was tragic. But the real tragedy was not John's daughter dying, it was how the game ruined any emotional impact of John's daughter dying. Ah, uh, that was bad. And then... Kind of in a similar vein to a lack of autosaves, but not actually a bug, was the very end scene. The whole, gotta shoot the machine parts to kill Dr. Balan thing. Oh my god! Game! Don't you know what autosaves are? Autosaves! Ma make one! Make an autosave after the dialogue! So I don't have to go through the dialogue every single time! Or let me save myself, which I couldn't. You can't skip the dialogue. You can't make a save, because escape does nothing during that scene, and the game doesn't autosave. Jesus! Having to play the end, that whole dialogue again like three or four times. Ruined any emotional impact that the ending could have. Which, honestly, it might not have had really anyway, because, you know, Dr. Milan is super cheesy and believes himself to be a god, and I can't take that too seriously. After that whole... After how annoying that was, it's like, okay, Taya's dead, she betrayed me, okay, sure, whatever, I don't really care, okay, cool, the end. Like, I just stopped caring. I didn't care anymore. And that's a shame. Oh, let's also talk about the puzzles. Uh, puzzles are overall mm, mediocre. The good thing about them is that for the most part you're doing things that are fairly reasonable and actually have something to do with what you're trying to achieve. In the sense of you're not doing completely random stuff, right? Like you need to seal a crack so you gotta get some resin from the tree, put it on the metal plate to form like a, a patch seal kind of thing, or you gotta blow open a door so you gotta put some you know, canister in front of it and then shoot the canister, gotta kill the robot so you gotta block up the drain, gotta get the water pouring on the ground, wait till the robot's in it, shock it, like, you know, it, it all fairly well makes sense. It's just, there's a lot of lack of feedback all the time that just makes it really... It leads to a lot of frustrations, like, even realizing that there's a bandage that you can pick up from one of the pregnant women to stuff in the drain to clog it, just even finding the bandage is really hard and totally unnecessarily just, like, pixel hunty to even find it, that it's a thing. It's, that's really annoying. And the whole incinerator, a long, long time ago, the whole incinerator towel thing, that was... Oh, the lack of feedback there was so annoying. It was so hard to tell what was going on, because the game just was not giving proper feedback. And that happens pretty frequently, the game just not giving proper feedback. And the whole laser thing, like, I didn't realize that I was getting the batteries to charge up the laser. I didn't realize that, because I didn't realize the laser was shut down because it didn't have power. And especially because, if you remember, in fact, it should even be a save game from the time- yeah, right here. Yeah, right here. So, if you look at the description of the surgical laser, it doesn't mention anything about it not having power. It just says, remotely operated surgical model, blah blah blah, lethal, could split steel. It's like, okay. It doesn't mention anything about being powered down. And especially this. This, this bar here is saying, you need power, right? That's a power symbol. This is a red bar saying it does not have power. And then attached to it is also this hologram of the strapped down creature. Nowhere in, like this hologram is telling me, to me, this hologram is saying, need power, I don't have power, need power for creature. Because it has a bunch of symbols that say don't have power, and then it's got a hologram of the creature. Nowhere in here does it show the laser. Nothing about this suggests that, to me, that the laser is what's actually going to be powered up. To me, it suggests something is going to be powered up for the creature, but it doesn't suggest what. Because it doesn't have the laser, like, why does it have a hologram of the creature rather than a hologram of the laser? Or something. 
I... I don't get it. I thought it was like maybe for life support for the creature or something? Like, the feedback just isn't good. It's really not good. There's all sorts of other little annoyances, like you can't use uh, the fuse or the eyeball when you're in the screen. You have to like back out and then use it on like the outside screen on the item for no good reason. Just lots of like little usability issues and stuff like that, and the puzzles just end up being really mediocre. Just bleh. Yeah, I, I don't know. There's some more detail I can go to, go into on the puzzles, but I, I think that about sums it up. They're overall pretty mediocre. Moderately frustrating. Not terrible, but they're not good. They're just... bleh. <laughs> ah, so... This game... Overall, I enjoyed it, and I'm glad I played it. And it's exactly the sort of game I normally like. But... The execution of it just isn't great. It's... it's okay. It's just... it's okay. And I'm a little bit disappointed, because I wanted it to be more than okay. I wanted it to be great, and it could have been great. You know, it shot for the stars, it had tried to get there, and... it didn't. It fell short. But... gotta give it credit. At least it tried. And it did do some things really, really well. Alright, so I think that makes a pretty good wrap-up for the series. I uh, hope you enjoyed joining me for my journey through Stasis. And as just a final message, if you remember, we read a log a long time ago about the security person, Ronald Anderson. Remember the person with uh, no real friends until he got aboard the ship? The person that nobody really knew, didn't really have any family, or his family wouldn't even know about him, him dying? And the other people were saying, whoever reads this, whatever you do, you know, remember, remember Anderson. Just remember him. So let's do that. Let's remember the poor security guy, Ronald Anderson. <laughs>